John Tyler was a terrible human being. Ah, yes, the most uncharismatic president yet. John Tyler was an awful president. And here we're gonna, you know, discuss that. Why was he so terrible? Well, you're about to find out. John Tyler, born in Virginia. Okay, so you, you already kind of know this is gonna spiral downhill because Virginia back then... So, yeah, okay. So John Tyler, <clears throat> um, he embodied many of the same, like, political, uh, beliefs as, you know, founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson, and he'd also held a significant amount of political office. He had served in the House of Representatives, the Senate, he had been William Henry Harrison's vice president for a month. That must have been a really tough job. <laughs> Okay, so then when William Henry Harrison died, everybody was just kind of like, what happens now? What's gonna happen right now? I don't know. And they didn't know what was gonna happen from there, really. So John Tyler steps in and is kind of like, hello? It's probably not exactly what he did. The Constitution kind of said that if, if the president died while in office, the vice president could assume all the duties of the president of the United States. But it wasn't exactly clear if the, if the vice president would actually become the president when his predecessor died. So that was kind of not really, you know, thought out by the founding fathers. They didn't really know how this transition of power was going to be. So John Tyler pretty much says, you know what? I want to be the president now. I'm going to make the rules now. I don't care. You get out of my way. He took it to <clears throat> a, an extent where he... He would not respond to any letter sent to him that was addressed to Mr. Vice President. It had to be addressed as Mr. President or else he wouldn't open it. That is the extent he went to. So he was pretty serious about this. Um, fun fact, I want to do a, a new segment in every, um, presidential video called Fun Fact. Um, so here we go. Here's the first person I'm going to do it for. Fun Fact! Did you know that John Tyler played the violin and had the most kids of any president? Fifteen, to be exact. Fifteen kids! He had, I believe, eight with his first wife, and then when she died, he remarried to a woman who had already had seven kids, and he adopted all of them, so... Woohoo! Good for you. Wonder how you're gonna keep track of all of them. Alright, Bob, Johnny, Timmy, Tom, Donnie, Fish, Bob number two. How are you gonna keep track of all of them? Anyway, fun fact segment is over. Back to the actual president. So John Tyler gets into office and he's really abusive to the Whig party, the party that he's in. And really, he's more of a Democrat than anything. It came to a point where he was actually kicked out of the Whig party. Actually, he was the first president in which he actually underwent some articles of impeachment that were supposed to go against him, but there was never an actual verdict so he never got impeached. But yeah, that was a pretty big deal. So he served the rest of his tenure as president without a party. Sorry. <laughs> the party's over. Anyway, then he made a really daring decision, something that Martin Van Buren had ignored, the annexation of Texas. Now when I say annexation, I'm really being generous, because annexation 
It's supposed to, like, brighten the term, but, you know, it kind of means to steal. I'm not letting you get away with that, President John Tyler. You hear me? I'm the, I'm president, the president! I can, I can do whatever, whatever I, want. I want! So he annexes Texas from Mexico. This can directly be connected to the cause of the Civil War. You want to hear why? Okay. John Tyler, he annexes Texas, which means that this would cause a huge debacle in the next president's administration. When Mexico gets frustrated, and they definitely have a right to be, frustrated because, you know, a huge chunk of their land, Texas, was stolen from them. So, it turns into a war, America wins, Mexico doesn't get what they want, because, you know, Americans are just like, who cares about Mexico? Guess what? I do! And then, after that, so much land gets added to the United States because Mexico didn't get what they want. WHICH THEY DESERVE IT TO! And it turns into a debacle between North and South, who's gonna get this extra territory. That was prolonged, and then, boom, civil war. Thanks, John Tyler. Thanks a whole f***ing lot. He doesn't get renominated by the Whigs or the Democrats, and he just has to bow out gracefully. A really racist pig like Andrew Jackson. And he's the only president ever to actually betray the Union. Do you want to know why? Yeah. In 1861, he was elected to the Confederate House of Representatives and agreed to take the role. Thank God he died before he could ever take a seat in 1862. So there's John Tyler. Terrible column you go. Absolutely, you know, just awful. So yeah, that was a very, very distressful episode. And the next president is not gonna be any better. Um, maybe by a tiny bit. Ah, no spoilers, no spoilers. But the next president is James K. Polk, the hardest working president, as he's called. Very efficient, but I'm not on the same track as you, James K. Polk. So, um, yeah, there you go. See you then. Hasta luego.